Hey everyone, this is TJ coming at you for another episode on What Up Ohms. This is a channel that I talk about electrical engineering, undergraduate experience, uh, recent grad experience, and up until my career right now, experience I will share um, hopefully good tips that will help you in your journey as an upcoming engineer or as a recent grad where to go from there. So last video I talked about the different sectors that you can find yourself in when studying electrical engineering whether that be power controls or programming and other disciplines that you can find because electrical engineering is so broad there's so many things we have a colorful spectrum if you will that we can choose from so what happens if you go into power controls or programming um, just off of those three for an example what happens after you get a bachelor's and you get into the job, you're working, and you wanna move up. If you find yourself in power, for example, you might wanna become a licensed engineer. Now, is that going to get you more pay? It will. Most companies give you a little raise when you become licensed, and even bigger raise when you become a professional engineer. So you have two licenses that you can get after your bachelor's, and in some cases, you can actually get the first license before graduating. So if you're really interested in power programming controls, those will have the PE exam, the EIT exam. So the EIT is your first license that you can get, and you can get that before you graduate in your bachelor's degree program. So the EIT, the engineering training license, is good for eight years, and you have, you study for it, they give you materials, there's plenty of books, videos, and programs of other licensed engineers that do kind of like those boot camps for coding they have that to pass the eit exam and once you get that you will get the it's called the fe exam the fundamentals of engineering and when you pass that you get an eit license so you can go on your linkedin and you put your name comma eit that is now your title you can use that at work on your work emails and it's really great it's like another achievement for us and after that, you have to get four years experience to become a professional engineering license or to be eligible for it. But you can take the exam way before that. If you hit the ground running, you get your EIT, you graduate with your bachelor's, you get a job, you can begin studying for the PE exam. Once you have four years experience, though, is when you can apply to become a licensed professional engineer. But the exam, let me tell you, is very, very difficult. You need to spend months. I'm talking four to six months guaranteed pure studying. So that is a very heavy challenge to go through, but it's very re rewarding because not only will you get more recognition in your work, but you also get more in demand. There's going to be so many recruiters reaching out to you once your profile says that you on your resume says that you're already passed the PE exam and you're ready to become a licensed one in your state because they're different state every state has their own um, test pretty much almost standardized but you'll have to test if you let's say you tested in Texas you'd have to test again in, like if I went to Florida or something like that I'd have to take another test again to get that state license but let's say in your state, you're ready to go, you took the EIT, then you study four to six months and you pass that test. Then you can apply for the license once you've met four years of work experience. So, and, and it's a, like I said, it's a heavy challenge to go through. I went through it. I uh, was already two years out of college. I got my EIT license because work had told me about getting this license because we don't hear about this in school. And after that, they said, you know what? You should go right into get your PE. Go take the test so you have it passed and you're just waiting on your year's experience. So I did that. I studied for four months. I took uh, test masters and it was, there's hundreds of videos. It's so many hours long and it was very hard to self-discipline to study for that exam. I spent weeks going through one video because it was like 15 hour long one video. That's a lot, that's a lot to retain and it's not structured as well. And I ended up 
thinking I was ready for the test, I went to the capital of Texas in Austin and I bombed it. I thought I did really well, but it's eight hours long. You get a four hour first morning half, you have a break, then you have four hours in the afternoon and it's brutal. I heard structural engineers have it worse and I don't doubt that because they have two days they have to do that. But as electrical engineers going for your PE, it is a grueling task. You will be there eight hours. It's very draining. You, And then this was before, and right now it's online. When I took it, it wasn't too long ago in 2017, it was in person. And you had to wait three months to get your results as a minimum. So I wait on the fourth month later, I got my results. I was like nervous, excited, and I just saw a big F. And <laughs> I mean, it's okay. It's okay to fail because that's the whole point in life. You need to fail to overcome those challenges, to push yourself. And then once you pass, it's very rewarding. That's what people don't know. And a lot of people are telling me, you know, a lot of people take many, many times to get through it and to pass the test and that's okay. So I went through it once. I plan to go through it again. And I'm going to also in uh, upcoming videos document my experience. I'm going to be taking a another PE course to compare against test masters. This other course is done by a licensed professional engineer who's taught it for over five years. I know I, he might be close to 10 years of teaching it, but I'm not too sure. Uh, but yeah, in the upcoming videos, I'll share my experience because this will be my second attempt going through the PE exam of studying for months and then taking it. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun challenge. But when do you think you should get the PE and is it worth it? It is worth it for certain industries. And when you should take it is when you're employed and there's positions to move up in the chain. If there's so many engineers with you and all of your EITs, they're not going to make everyone a PE. They're going to want, you know, they're going to, you're going to have to go into like different levels because that's a big company. In most companies that are a little smaller, like firms or something like that, uh, you can find yourself that you are one of the only EITs. And if you become a PE, there's a project management role that they'd want to put you in. So it really depends on where you work to see if it's worth it. But ultimately, it's another form of education that can't be taken away from you. So of course, it's, I'm going to say it's worth it because being a PE is more than just the pay raise because it's extra. It's it's that joy of learning something. And it, that's what drives engineers. We want to learn to solve problems. And in the PE, there's a mixture of that like code language that I mentioned in my other video, the NEC, NESC, uh, NFPA, those type of codes that you'll dive into when you study for the PE exam, those have to be upheld for the community. As a PE, you're, you're sealing these jobs that are being built for big buildings, commercial, industrial, things that every everyday use of the common uh, welfare of people needs to be taken seriously. As PEs, that responsibility of you sealing that job, that can't harm the general public in any way. That needs to be there for years, especially like a, if you're a civil engineer, structural engineer dealing with like a bridge, you don't want that bridge to give out. And who's if it does, the PE is responsible because they sealed the job saying it's ready. It upheld all the codes and everything that was calculated and designed was done so good over this long of time. It's ready to be used for years, especially with power as electrical engineers. We don't want that. We design systems that schools replicate construction designs it at every school and find out that every school cap fire, you know, <laughs> that's an extreme case, but that's what you need to think about. So if you are ready for that challenge, you're ready to move up. You want that responsibility, the weight on that shoulder right there, then go ahead and start preparing and get that PE taken care of. So that's when I think uh, about the PE. Let me know if you have gone through it and are in similar experience where you've taken it and you failed. Um, that Reach out to me because I'm also going to go in that second attempt. I, we never give up when we go through these types of tests. So uh, it's going to be a fun challenge that I'll gladly document for all of you on my What Up Ohm cha uh, channel. So go ahead and hit that like button if you want more uh, videos like this where I talk about more industry, more things we can achieve like certificates and licenses. 
and be sure to subscribe to help the algorithm so other students can find this video and be prepared to enter the world hitting the ground running. So you feel me, Ohms? 